Tony Torrance and the Three Cruel Rabbits. A fairy tale. By John Doe. Once upon a time there was a snooty boy called Tony Torrance. He was on the way to see his Michelle England, when he decided to take a shortcut through Wire Forest. It wasn't long before Tony got lost. He looked around, but all he could see were trees. Nervously, he felt into his bag for his favorite toy, Emma, but Emma was nowhere to be found. Tony began to panic. He felt sure he had packed Emma. To make matters worse, he was starting to feel hungry. Unexpectedly, he saw a cruel rabbit dressed in a pink bowler hat disappearing into the trees. How odd, thought Tony. For the want of anything better to do, he decided to follow the peculiarly dressed rabbit. Perhaps it could tell him the way out of the forest. Eventually, Tony reached a clearing. He found himself surrounded by houses made from different sorts of food. There was a house made from red cabbages, a house made from donuts, a house made from donuts and a house made from pancakes. Tony could feel his tummy rumbling. Looking at the houses did nothing to ease his hunger. Hello, he called. Is anybody there? Nobody replied. Tony looked at the root on the closest house and wondered if it would be rude to eat somebody else's chimney. Obviously it would be impolite to eat a whole house, but perhaps it would be considered acceptable to nibble the odd fixture or lick the odd fitting, in a time of need. A cackle broke through the air, giving Tony a fright. A witch jumped into the space in front of the houses. She was carrying a cage. In that cage was Emma. Emma, shouted Tony. He turned to the witch. That's my toy. The witch just shrugged. Give Emma back, cried Tony. Not on your Nelly, said the witch. At least let Emma out of that cage. Before she could reply, three cruel rabbits rushed in from a footpath on the other side of the clearing. Tony recognized the one in the pink bowler hat that he'd seen earlier. The witch seemed to recognize him too. Hello big rabbit, said the witch. Good morning. The rabbit noticed Emma. Who is this? That's Emma, explained the witch. Oh, Emma would look lovely in my house. Give it to me, demanded the rabbit. The witch shook her head. Emma is staying with me. Um, excuse me. Tony interrupted. Emma lies with me. And not in a cage. Big rabbit ignored him. Is there nothing you'll trade, he asked the witch. The witch thought for a moment, then said, I'd like to be entertained. I'll release him to anybody who can eat a whole front door. Big Rabbit looked at the house made from pancakes and said, No problem, I could eat an entire house made from pancakes if I wanted to. That's nothing, said the next rabbit. I could eat two houses. There's no need to show off, said the witch. Just eat one front door and I'll let you have Emma. Tony watched, feeling very worried. He didn't want the witch to give Emma to Big Rabbit. He didn't think Emma would like living with a cruel rabbit, away from his house and all his other toys. The other two rabbits watched while Big Rabbit put on his bib and withdrew a knife and fork from his pocket. I'll eat this whole house, said Big Rabbit. Just you watch. Big Rabbit pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from donuts. He gulped it down smiling, and went back for more. And more. And more. Eventually, Big Rabbit started to get bigger, just a little bit bigger at first. But after a few more forkfuls of donuts, he grew to the size of a large snowball, and he was every bit as round. ERM. I don't feel too good, said Big Rabbit. Suddenly, he started to roll. He'd grown so round that he could no longer balance. Help, he cried, as he rolled off down a slope into the forest. Big Rabbit never finished eating the front door made from donuts and Emma remained trapped in the witch's cage. Average Rabbit stepped up, and approached the house made from donuts. I'll eat this whole house, said Average Rabbit. Just you watch. Average Rabbit pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from donuts. She gulped it down smiling, and went back for more. And more. And more. After a while, Average Rabbit started to look a little queasy. She grew greener. And greener. A woodcutter walked into the clearing. What's this bush doing here? He asked. I'm not a bush, I'm a rabbit, said Average Rabbit. It talks, exclaimed the woodcutter. Those talking bushes are the worst kind. I'd better take it away before somebody gets hurt. No. Wait, cried Average Rabbit, as the woodcutter picked her up. But the woodcutter ignored her cries and carried the rabbit away under his arm. Average Rabbit never finished eating the front door made from donuts and Emma remained trapped in the witch's cage. Little Rabbit stepped up and approached the house made from pancakes. I'll eat this whole house, said Little Rabbit. Just you watch. Little Rabbit pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from pancakes. He gulped it down smiling, and went back for more. And more. And more. After five or six platefuls, Little Rabbit started to fidget uncomfortably on the spot. He stopped eating pancakes for a moment, then grabbed another forkful. But before he could eat it, there came an almighty roar. A bottom burp louder than a rocket taking off, propelled Little Rabbit into the sky. Ah, cried Little Rabbit. I'm scared of hay. Little Rabbit was never seen again. Little Rabbit never finished eating the front door made from pancakes and Emma remained trapped in the witch's cage. That's it, said the witch. I win. I get to keep Emma. Not so fast, said Tony. There is still one front door to go. The front door of the house made from red cabbages. And I haven't had a turn yet. I don't have to give you a turn, laughed the witch. My game. My rules. The woodcutter's voice carried through the forest. I think you should give him a chance. It's only fair. Fine, said the witch. But you saw what happened to the rabbits. He won't last long. I'll be right back, said Tony. What, said the witch. Where's your sense of impatience? I thought you wanted Emma back. Tony ignored the witch and gathered a hefty pile of sticks. He came back to the clearing and started a small campfire. Carefully, he broke off a piece of the door of the house made from red cabbages and toasted it over the fire. Once it had cooked and cooled just a little, he took a bite. He quickly devoured the whole piece. Tony sat down on a nearby log. You fail, cackled the witch. You were supposed to eat the whole door. I haven't finished, explained Tony. I am just waiting for my food to go down. When Tony's food had digested, he broke off another piece of the door made from red cabbages. Once more, he toasted his food over the fire and waited for it to cool just a little. He ate it at a leisurely pace and waited for it to digest. Eventually, after several sittings, Tony was down to the final piece of the door made from red cabbages. Carefully, he toasted it and allowed it to cool just a little. He finished his final course. Tony had eaten the entire front door of the house made from red cabbages. The witch stamped her foot angrily. You must have tricked me, she said. I don't reward cheating. I don't think so, said a voice. It was the woodcutter. He walked back into the clearing, carrying his axe. This little boy won fair and square. Now hand over Emma or I will chop your broomstick in half. The witch looked horrified. She grabbed her broomstick and placed it behind her. Then, huffing, she opened the door of the cage. Tony hurried over and grabbed Emma, checking that his favorite toy was all right. Fortunately, Emma was unharmed. Tony thanked the woodcutter, grabbed a quick souvenir, and hurried on to meet Michelle. It was starting to get dark. 
when Tony got to Michelle's house, is threw her arms around him. I was so worried, cried Michelle. You are very late. As Tony described his day, he could tell that Michelle didn't believe him. So he grabbed a napkin from his pocket. What's that? asked Michelle. Tony unwrapped a doorknob made from donuts. Quitting, he said. Michelle almost fell off her chair. The end.